Welcome back to Fox Recaps. Today, I'm going to explain the movie Flawless, released in the year 2007. The movie begins with a reporter entering a restaurant to interview Miss Laura Quinn, the only woman to have ever been a manager at the London Diamond Corporation. The reporter is writing a puff piece about the first generation of women entering the workforce. As the conversation goes on, Quinn places a box on the table, revealing a huge diamond, and says, I stole it. The reporter, suddenly enthralled, assumes that Quinn has been in prison for the theft all this time. The movie then flashes back to 1960, when Quinn was still employed as a manager at London Diamond Corporation. The corporation is currently facing heat for a mining tragedy that took the lives of over 100 African miners in South Africa. The Soviet Union is pressing for UN sanctions against the UK, even though they're secretly doing business with the London Diamond Corporation. At an emergency meeting, Quinn's male co-workers advise teaching the Russians a lesson, but she warns her boss that it could be disastrous as they could align with a rival company for diamonds. Quinn's boss, Sir Milton Kendrick Ashtoncroft, agrees with her, but at the very same meeting, he promotes her male colleague Peter Boland for the position of managing director over her. Quinn is naturally upset, but she doesn't express her dissatisfaction. Instead, she writes a letter to herself reminding herself to never give up. Despite the setback, she continues working with full determination, which is evident by the fact that she's the last one to leave after work. The next day, she runs into a man named Harold Reynolds at work. It turns out that they went to the same university and Reynolds seriously pursued Quinn, but she never showed any interest in him. Reynolds reveals that he works for Allied Banking and hands her his business card, suggesting she should contact him if she feels like changing careers. Later, Quinn finds a brand new movie ticket in her office and a note from someone telling her to never give up. Intrigued, she uses the movie ticket, deciding to meet the person. At the movie theater, the man is revealed to be LDC's janitor, Mr. Hobbs. Weirded out, Quinn proceeds to leave, but Mr. Hobbs tells her that he's happily married and is not hitting on her, explaining that he actually has a business proposition. After a lot of convincing, Quinn agrees to hear him out. Mr. Hobbs then tells her that he's aware of her frustration with LDC, as she has been passed over for promotion six times in the last three years. Quinn feels embarrassed and proceeds to leave, but Mr. Hobbs tells her that she's about to be fired from her job. Hearing this, Quinn is taken aback, and she asks Mr. Hobbs how he knows of this. The old man simply replies that a lot of high-ranking employees have personal conversations in front of the cleaners, almost as if they don't exist. Worried about her future at the company, Quinn decides to finally meet Reynolds the next day, but he reveals that there's rumors going around that she botched LDC's deal with the Russians, therefore he can't offer her a job. Left with no choice, Quinn agrees to meet Mr. Hobbs. The old man then reveals that he's planning to steal $1 million worth of diamonds from the LDC because in six months' time, he is about to retire with nothing to show for all his years at the company. He claims that the company wouldn't even notice such a small heist. He also claims that he wants to use the money to do something for his wife, but Quinn, who has run a background check on him before the meeting, calls him out for lying. It turns out Mr. Hobbs' wife has long been dead. She also reveals that Mr. Hobbs was training to be a plumber, but he was forced to take the cleaning job at the LDC when his wife fell sick. Hearing all this, Hobbs apologizes for lying, and commends Quinn for her sharpness before explaining his extensive plan to steal the diamonds from the company. The elaborate plan involves stealing the passcodes to the company vault from Ashcroft's home during a dinner party. Before ending the meeting, he informs Quinn that she is the one who's going to steal the passcodes from Ashtoncroft. Although confused, Quinn agrees to do it, as she wants to become rich at any cost. At the party, Quinn entertains Vladimir Dmitriev, the head of the Soviet Diamond Authority, before covertly slipping into Ashtoncroft's room. She looks for the codes under the center table as instructed by Mr. Hobbs, but fails to locate them. To make matters worse, Ashtoncroft arrives, forcing Quinn to hide. Ashtoncroft takes out some documents from his safe, 
and Quinn uses the opportunity to memorize its passcode. After he leaves, she opens his safe and obtains the combination codes to LDC's vault written on a paper. Excitedly, Quinn gives Mr. Hobbs the passcodes, but the next day, to her dismay, LDC installs security cameras all over the building. The company has set up eight separate cameras, including one dedicated to the vault corridor. The cameras link to the guard station, where a man is on watch 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Quinn rushes to tell Mr. Hobbs, asking him to call the whole thing off. However, the old man refuses to back down and blackmails her into helping him. Left with no choice, Quinn tells him about a loophole in the security. It turns out that although there are eight cameras in the sub-basement, only four images are on screen at any one time, four on and four off. Since the images recycle in 15-second intervals, they reappear in the order they leave. This means that each image is off-screen for 60 seconds. Mr. Hobbs has to go from the end of the corridor into the vault in 60 seconds. As expected, the confident Mr. Hobbs assures Quinn that it's enough time for him to execute his plans. On the D-Day, Mr. Hobbs cleans the guard station to sync his stopwatch to the temporal blind spot of the security camera system before going through with the heist. To help him buy some time, Quinn prank calls the guard station from a payphone. Meanwhile, Mr. Hobbs gains entry into the vault and steals every single diamond, almost two tons worth, instead of the previously agreed amount. Quinn soon finds out about Mr. Hobbs' betrayal when Ashton Croft calls an emergency meeting to inform the staff about a robbery. The LDC hires a private investigator named Finch to investigate the heist and warns the staff to keep the matter from going public. Elsewhere, Quinn panics and tries to convince Mr. Hobbs to return the loot, but without success. Instead, he demands a ransom of 100 million pounds from the LDC by way of a proxy. Quinn, having never agreed to this, now finds herself trapped. With time passing by, Finch notices her multiple suspicious rendezvous with Mr. Hobbs at the LDC and begins to keep a close eye on them. To avoid capture and jail, Quinn seeks to give the diamonds back and assist Finch with the investigation, even though she has no idea where Mr. Hobbs has hidden the diamonds. Finch soon finds the loophole in the security camera system and ascertains on his own that the crime was perpetrated by one or a number of LDC employees. He also correctly predicts that the perpetrator obtained the codes to the vault from Ashton Croft's residence. After the revelation, the head of the insurance syndicate from King's Row, Sir Sinclair, refuses to compensate the LDC for the stolen diamonds, calling it an inside job. This infuriates Ashton Croft, and he gets into a heated argument with Sinclair. Meanwhile, Quinn continues to press Mr. Hobbs while also trying to figure out how he managed to smuggle the diamonds out of the LDC building. Finch becomes close to Quinn, so when he finds Quinn's fingerprints in Ashton Croft's room, he is taken aback. However, instead of handing her over to the police, Finch takes her out for drinks to confront her about it. Elsewhere, Sinclair leaks the news of the robbery to the press to teach Ashton Croft a lesson for threatening to ruin his career. In no time, the press swarms the LDC HQ, and the company president Ashton Croft has a heart attack due to the stress. Back at the bar, Finch questions Quinn about her fingerprints that were found in Ashton Croft's room. However, Quinn continues to deny her involvement in the heist. Halfway through the confrontation, Finch is forced to leave when he hears about Ashton Croft's heart attack. After he leaves, a cornered and scared Quinn runs to the bathroom and cries uncontrollably. In the process, she accidentally drops her diamond earrings into the sink. The diamond earrings fall down the drain, and it suddenly strikes Quinn how the heist could have been pulled, and where the diamonds could be. Quinn immediately rushes to the LDC HQ and goes down into the sewers under the company. As expected, she finds Mr. Hobbs guarding a passage. When Quinn threatens to report him to the police, Mr. Hobbs pulls a gun on her. However, Quinn swats the gun out of his hand and manages to run away. Unfortunately, she isn't able to outrun him and gets caught again. She notices a huge diamond at her feet and quickly pockets it as Mr. Hobbs confesses he has no interest in the diamonds or the money. 
He just wants to ruin the head of the insurance syndicate, Clifton Sinclair, whose deliberate delay in covering his wife's medical expenses resulted in her death many years before. At the King's Row HQ, Sinclair's boss finds out that he leaked the story to the press. To keep Ashton Croft from pressing any charges, he decides to authorize the settlement of the LDC's insurance claim, which would be used to pay the ransom, leaving Sinclair financially ruined. Unable to bear the pain of losing everything, Sinclair takes his own life. Once the deadline for the ransom has passed, Mr. Hobbs leaves, claiming that his mission has been accomplished. Shortly after, a terrified Quinn wanders around the sewers and finds the rest of the diamonds. She immediately calls Finch and lies that she just followed a hunch. While there is questionable proof that she was involved in the incident, Finch decides against pressing charges against her, seemingly because he has developed feelings for her. After a while, the company recovers the stolen property and implies to the press the theft was just a rumor. Following this, the story returns to the present. Quinn tells the reporter that after an extensive investigation, the LDC found that Mr. Hobbs had acted alone and she returned to her job. However, she resigned after she was passed over again for a promotion. Shortly after, she received a letter from a bank in Switzerland. Mr. Hobbs apologized for involving her, citing that he needed a disgruntled employee for access to the diamond vault. He also compensated her with a large amount of money. Quinn details how she spent the rest of her life donating all the unspent money to many different organizations and people in need. She has returned to London after a long absence only to tell the story. She reveals that she has donated everything except the diamond, which she says is the last little piece of vanity she has left. That was all from the video. I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button to help us out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Until next time, take care.